This episode of MMA Nuts is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Get a 149.com with code MMA149. TiVo, get $50 off a Romeo DVR with code MMA. Defense Silk, get 15% off your order with code MMA Nuts. Woo! Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 219. 2 1 9 <laughs> You went all Nine military up. on me here. My name is Ingo Weigel. We are with MMA Show. Bye, MMA fans, for my fans. We walked the line between serious and ridiculous. What is going on? Well, apparently Nick Walenda is in Chicago this weekend. I am trying to find out the results of whether the man made it or died. I'm sure he made it. Um, Those Walendas are, are made out of rubber. <laughs> oh, yeah? I don't are know. They, are they, like, related to the, the Gracies? Yes, it's uh, the Hoover Band guard, I hear. The Hoover popular. Band high-rise Apparently guard. Apparently that's not Gracie, though. Um, oh, yeah, he successfully completes the two Chicago See? skyscraper tightrope. Wasn't well, it snowing? Because it's been know. a little cold out here in the Chicagoland area. It snowed on Halloween. That was fucked up. It was so <laughs> fucking cold on Friday. Oh, my God. I tried to walk to go with the kids yeah. trick-or-treating, and, dude, it was not pleasant. Didn't you prepare? Huh? Long underwear and... Winter jacket and no, fleece. Of course and not. Hat and gloves. I'm like, it ain't that cold. Oh. I can't get down. It's the wind. It's that northerly wind that comes yeah. down from the Green Bay's area, Wisconsin's area, Canadia area. Just the Canadians. Like, it's a shiver. Poutine havers. Yeah. Next year, I'm going to drink some rum, I think, or something. <laughs> or you could warm. just dress warmer. <laughs> you don't have to booze it up. <laughs> So a rum and apple, drink apple cider. Nothing. <laughs> uh, nothing to see here. Please disperse. Don't worry. Yeah. What's happening? You get some news. You choose the news, you lose. The news? You yeah. have me some news? Sure. Okay. Go well, ahead. let's get into it. Uh, the rumor around the campfire, Matt, is that, that? Vanderlei Silva versus Phil Baroni in Japan <laughs> around New Year's Eve. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? I'm all for it. Are you? Sure. Why Are not? Are they both going to be on the juice? He's banned for life. And didn't Baroni get cut from Bellator too because he was friends with War Machine and they wanted to have no association with either? Something like that. But these so, guys both have a history of, uh, you know, good external Fucking extra juice cutaneous substances being injected into their buttocks. Good. Yes. It's good for the sport, Ingo. Yeah. Speaking of which, how's your TRT going? Good. Are you swole? I am swole. <laughs> Do you still fit in your sauna? <laughs> <laughs> Barely. My pantalones, azules, my legs are getting a little it's bigger. Like, he's got to go in sideways. <laughs> yeah, fit the other out. way. I shaved yesterday. It grows back. Nice. Instantly. Okay. Or something. Fingernails grow faster probably, right? Everything. Everything's growing faster. Yes. It's all good. Nice. It's all good. Okay. Um, you got uh, the, well, the other rumor was that uh, Vanderlei Silva, won, I don't know if he wants to, but... Some organization in Brazil is offering a Silva versus Sun and fight. In Brazil? Brazil? Okay. Is that, can they do that? No. <laughs> because, <laughs> they, well, they'd have to somehow negate their UFC contracts. Although, if Sun and has officially retired, does that contract, is it still valid? I don't know. Mm hmm. I see. He yeah, can... because that happened to Couture, didn't it? Didn't Couture retire? He retired and then under retired. retired. Yeah. So I think the contract's still, you know, Ra uh, what's her, Gina Carano? Yeah. Retired, still under contract. Yeah. I think the contract lives on, Matt. It does. Why? <laughs> Why can't on. just let him go? It can't be a perpetuity. I don't know what that means. It means it's forever. It's a big word. It is. What else is going on? Oh, how about GSP's Halloween message, or Nick Diaz's Halloween message to GSP? What did he say? With the, he was wearing the alien mask, and uh, where you at, George? And he's also, we'll post that video of him with the nunchucks and his <laughs> fucking alien it. mask. I did not like, see that. Oh, like, what the fuck is this guy on? I like it. This he's guy's not. got more personality than 95% of the UFC fighters. Oh, my Thank God. Thank God he's coming back. Is this in response to GSP's thing where he said he was like in the car in yeah. Albuquerque and saw unidentified flying objects? Him and who? Uh, Rashad and Van Arsdale? Yeah, Van Arsdale. Three of them or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He still seems awfully weird about he's talking big. about it. He looks huge. I didn't see it's the like pictures. He's like 220 pounds or something. This guy's gigantic. 
Oh, so he's, not he's gonna, totally on the sauce he's not now. Coming back. He, he shouldn't come back. Can they test him if he's retired? No. No. But huh. he should. He probably is juiced up to the gills right now. Why not? Because if, especially if you were trying to come back from an injury, seems like the perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna take a break. But I'm gonna juice. Yeah, I'm gonna take a two-year <laughs> sauce break and just fucking. I gotta get huge. I'm gonna hang out with Alistair Overeem. You know, we're gonna test out gonna some horse meats around the world. Debut at 205. <laughs> well, I don't know. He might debut at heavyweight. <laughs> Comes back at heavyweight. That'd be fun to watch. That would be epic. He'd be a little too small, like short. Yeah, I think for heavyweight, but GSP at two, 205, 185. Interesting. Be fun to see. Speaking of heavyweights, did you see this Mark Hunt video he put out no. today? A little quick, little 10 seconder talking, talking to the fans. We're talking shit to him on Facebook or whatever, saying, telling him how to train, saying he, these vatos don't know shit about training and you should mm. just stay behind your keyboard warrior ass. And <laughs> I stay think back there. The heat might be getting to the Mark Hunt. Maybe. Because he has about, what, 37 or 38 pounds he had to cut in. A few weeks. I forgot when that fight is. November 15th? 15th, ish? you said? Yeah, sounds right. Oh, him and Fabrizio Verdum going to fight for the interim title. And here's a question for you. Uh, does that mean there's still somewhat of a heavyweight curse intact now? Because the heavyweights in the UFC only defend the title twice and then they lose it. Mm -hmm. And now Kane is unable to defend it for his whatever third time, or second time. And now there's an interim title. Mm -hmm. So if the winner of that, are they the title holder? I don't get it. Well, if he cannot return, then I would say that the belt goes to the interim title holder, correct? Mark Hunt. But look at Dominic Cruz. He was out for like six <laughs> years and he still had the belt. It's true. Do they strip him of his belt? Yes, remember? They kept pushing it off and off. Oh, and yeah. then finally, finally in the I think after year. the calls of MMA nuts, <laughs> I, he was out one month and I was calling for a strip the belt! <laughs> the strip that fucker! He's too good for his own good. Six years later, finally. Yes, his title stripped him. Um, <laughs> good job. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Kane is cursed, it seems. He has a lot of issues. Like, the guy, man. Did you see some of his training videos? They said he had blew out his knee. But then someone posted a thing where he's doing leg extensions and he's doing them like poof, 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 with mad weight on there. Not good. Like, dude, I don't think I'm no training expert, <laughs> but I don't think you should be blasting <laughs> leg extensions out as hard and as fast as you can with massive amount of weight. It's just trying to go 30 reps. <laughs> that can't be good for your fucking knees. Yeah. So leg I don't do those anymore, but when I did, I never went all the way. I always went like. Three quarters, three quarters. Well, everything should be controlled unless you're doing like uh, Olympic lifts where you're looking for an explosive type of thing, like a squat or a Or are they trying to push build fast press. twitch muscles so that he can take down, take guys down and be explosive? Maybe, but... Like it, girthy? I, I, I just <laughs> say, from uh, outsider looking in, it didn't look it like crazy. the safest for your knee, yeah. seeing how he blew it out. And what's happening with all these guys getting injured? Is this less people on the sauce, maybe? More injuries? I don't, I don't know. It seems like we're back in this injury bug again. Yeah. We went through this a couple of years ago. Now all these champions are out. Going well, back. I don't know. I think maybe it's part of the whole, like, the MMA, that's what's weird. Like, if you look at professional sports like i think nfl nhl whatever mm -hmm. they, they they have a training regimen set and yeah you're going to have variations of things a little bit but for the most part i yeah. think mo a lot of these guys are training very similarly right but in mma it seems like everyone's doing different shit some guys like doesn't doesn't do weights he just does uh hitting tires and throwing rocks and going up hills and other guys only weights and other guys don't don't spar at all because it's, right. it's like it's such a varying and it all depends on you know their trainers and who they are and who, who their coaches are and who their you know training partners are so i don't know i think it's just a matter of maybe guys are just pushing it too hard outside you know the cage the yeah. juice is loose you, th you think it's all because they're not juicing could be are you accusing Look. kane of juicing pre the juice is loose days i'm saying 97 percent of them <laughs> my the percentage juice? goes up every time <laughs> it's like it was in the low 60s like it's six months ago now it's like a 90 i don't know if i've ever there dropped are literally below. two guys not juicing 
<laughs> they both retired. BJ Penn <laughs> is one of them. Yes. And uh, Rich Franklin? Yeah. Oh, well. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. He's looking a little big. No, well, not really. He was no. looking a little lean. Yeah. Not so much big. But. That's a misnomer, too. Just because you're on the juice doesn't mean you get huge. Right. Right? It's true. It just means you can heal faster. Yeah, look at, like, the cyclists, mm -hmm. right? Thin, lean fuckers. And a lot of the fighters that got popped, you know, some of them didn't look huge. It's like yeah. some of the little guys. Who was that guy? Bagatinov? Oh, yeah. 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 Wasn't he the guy that got yes. popped for something? Or yeah. I, I'm probably going to fuck it up. Something uh, jerk off or smear, uh, uh, jerk off Smirnoff? <laughs> yeah. That guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Isn't he making a comeback? Yes. What was that guy, uh, fucking, that, comer that, that guy that did those movies? Uh, Borat? <laughs> from Kazakhstan? <laughs> Something. Or who's the other one? I'm a child. I don't know. I love those movies. I died laughing every one of those. Did you see those? No. Oh, dude. He's so weird. He's so weird. It was strangely strange. I saw him in uh, that Will Ferrell movie with uh, the anchor Ricky man? Bobby. Oh. Uh, Days of Not Days, <laughs> Not Days of Thunder. That's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are the worst. That was a good movie. That was a good movie, though. <laughs> Days of Thunder was the shit. Yes. You know what the Nicole fuck I'm Kidman? talking about. Oh, yeah. He was in that movie, the racing oh, movie. I'm not even going to fucking look it up. I heard, you know what I heard was good? Huh. That movie Fury with Brad Pitt. It's supposed to be, aw it's supposed to be really good about the World War II shit. Um, like, apparently, he's really good in that movie. I don't know. There's a bunch of dudes in that movie, like good actors and shit. Anyways. They're making it rain? Something like that. You got any more news? Yeah. Please. So there's a lot of athletic commission stuff going on. So we have the California State Athletic Commission like working on some weight cutting uh, proposals because there's, we've okay. been having a lot of issues. So they're going to propose some same-day weigh-ins and some hydrostatic testing. And what that is, it says it specifies the gravity in a fighter's urine determining just how well an athlete is hydrated and it says this is to be done before a fighter is licensed long before a schedule about and in conjunction with the caliper test which will then determine what his or her minimum competition weight will be so they're weighing their pee is that what you're saying no that's part of it but they're going to use that along with the caliper test to get your a fighter's minimum weight What's the caliper? Like the fat percentage? Probably. Uh huh. So they're, they're doing science. I heard that was highly inaccurate, though. I don't know. Just, just fo follow me for a second. I'm so, oh, sorry. I guess so, what they're going to do then, you're going to establish a fighter's minimum weight. When he's cutting weight or before he cuts before. weight? Before. Okay. All right. I'm with you so far. So that, okay. Say, Min minimum weight? Yeah. Okay. So, you're not going to be allowed to fight in a weight class that you shouldn't be fighting in then. Oh, I see. So they're trying to they're trying to pigeonhole every person into what potentially is the lowest you can yes. weigh. I see. Okay. And then I think another part of that is they want to do the same day weigh-ins and then you're only going to be able to rehydrate to a certain percentage. And I want to say it was like 7% for men and 10% for women. So the, the good thing is, I don't know how it's going to work out, but at least someone's finally addressing it. Mm -hmm. You know. Scary. Same day weigh and scare me. I think you're going to see if a you've, death in the no, cage. No, no. Because they're going to probably do the weigh-ins like they normally do, and then you're going to do the same day weigh-in to see how much they've rehydrated. But if they establish that minimum weight, you're going to have guys going into different weight classes then. Because you could look at a guy like John Jones and say, Oh, he, the minimum he can fight at is fucking 215. Uh, oh, he's a heavyweight now. Oh, I see. So guys won't be able to cut down. Right. As much, like, I see. Yep. Hmm. It'll be interesting. This is on the UFC level? Mm -hmm. Or is it? Yeah, this uh, is the California State Athletic Commission. Okay. They're going to propose some Not just some, some, like, second tier kind of, oh, wow. This is legit. So hopefully they can approve something. So they're doing something. New Jersey Athletic Commission just brought instant replay in over the weekend. Yeah, read about this. How'd it go? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we're the best at not knowing things. <laughs> I like right. to do that. It's best people get all pissed off. Like, what happened? 
I don't know. I'm just <laughs> pointing out what's happening. I'm, I'm, I'm leading to something here. Yes. So you've got California being progressive, and we've got New Jersey being progressive, and we've got the Nevada State Athletic Commission who decides, hmm, this weekend looks like a good time to test Vitor Belfort <laughs> for a random drug test for a fight he's going to have in California. Makes yeah. fucking total sense. So... What the hell are they doing? I know they said at his commission hearing, whenever that was, when he was getting licensed to fight, it was originally scheduled to happen in Nevada, but then Weidman got hurt, so then it got pushed, and now it's in California. Should they even be testing him? Like, I don't get it. Are they it. allowed to test him? They, well, they said they were going to test him like five or six times. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they're going to follow through on it, regardless of what state he's going to fight in now. Interesting. At the fighter's expense also. But why would he be forced to do this? Could he just say no? Well, I think he probably agreed to it. Remember they had the oh, commission as hearing? Oh, that's right. As that part was of part of getting... the uh, uh -huh. ruling is that he agrees to be tested, but it's he's okay. not fighting. It's normal. In, he's not going <laughs> to fucking fight in California. I don't know. It seems weird to me. It seems like these other commissions are finally stepping up, and Nevada is stepping backwards. Maybe. They're going backwards. Someone should just bring TRT back. They're all gangsters. This is a, this is the mob state. It is. Yeah, they're like we're fucking in your shit, no matter what. <laughs> we're fucking in your <laughs> shit, bitch. That's right. That is kind of crazy. It is. They should bring TRT back. Just fuck it. No, oh. they can't give it, take it away, and then give it again. Oh yes, they can. <laughs> Trust me. It'll be if they give it back, it'll be ridiculous. Then yes. no one's gonna be following the rules. It'll be anarchy, Matt. Well, Brian Parsons was just on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he used to manage Dan Henderson. He said, Parsons said that he was the person that got Henderson the TRT exemption, and he said that during that process, Henderson's level never went over 1,100. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't understand, how does Vitor Belfort get to 14 <laughs> when he gets tested? Injecting a lot of TRT. Some people were abusing the program but not Dan Henderson. And he made the point, too. It's like, how big did you see Henderson get? He never looked like he was crazy big. Yeah. You know, he was weighing in the low 200s. Sure. So, it's interesting Good point. for you, Dan Henderson. You and your false teeth. He didn't overdo it. No. He just did it enough. And people like him should be able to do it just enough. So, moving <laughs> right along. Yes. So, Scott Coker said he's going to be signing... Like, a bunch of huge signings are coming to Bellator. Do you think it's possible they could sign Brock Lesnar? Isn't he still under contract with the UFC? I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Would they do that? I think, could you do that if you were not? I think Dana would, like, burn Bellator down. <laughs> he would blow a gasket, <laughs> but if you're Bellator and you signed him, holy shit, yeah. you're going to get some excitement. Yeah, but who is he going to fight? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fucking whoever, pie, tomato can, tomato can, the yeah. people's champion, he'll move up to fight him. Stefan Bonner. I don't give a shit. They will fucking fight. Juice Shane Carwin, kills. come back out of retirement, fighting Bellator. I know Carwin wants that rematch. He does. He does. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah, I don't know. I was just talking to Comprito about that whole Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin thing. Yeah? Yeah. What's the thoughts? What's, What's that? the takeaway on that, then? No, no, we just, we always kid around. He, he computer's like, shit, every time somebody, some shit happens and the, they talk about Brock Lesnar, like these websites, they just mm -hmm. create news stories. But, uh, yeah, he, he, he vividly remembers that fight. And I, I was, I always point out to him how worried everybody looked in the corner when Brock was getting the shit beat out of him against the cage by, by Carmen. And mm -hmm. Carmen's just like, Pounding on him, pounding on him, pounding on him, and when he came back to the to the chair, and how everyone just looked so worried, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, I was worried. <laughs> I was fucking over, you know." Yeah. But uh, that was the fight I think Brock gave Comprito all of his uh, submission of the night bonus. Yeah, because they had been working on that particular um, the submission, the, the the arm triangle, for the entire camp, and it just so happened to present itself, you know, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Comprito right now, he's a little bit, he's a bit jaded because he's doing really well with his school and he's doing well with his uh, seminars. And mm -hmm. He just won, I think he won the Worlds today. He went to the nice. Masters Division. Yeah. They have like the, you know, the upper level guys and he just won today. Um, 
but he's doing well with that. But he's saying like for a coach in MMA, it's so hard to make any money. You know, like the reason he doesn't coach more guys is because it's like it's a huge time investment, and unless they're at the upper echelon, like Brock, the payoff or, isn't there. there you yeah. can't make any money. You know, you, you, it's just impossible. It's a huge time investment. But um, yeah, I don't know. He always speaks fondly of Brock, that guy. <laughs> he just shakes his head. He t- I, I think that's your game. Yeah, he's like that's that's. I was always scared for my life when I would train with him. You know, because yeah, he literally he was a black belt who's been training in jiu-jitsu for like twenty plus years. Yeah, telling and me he's, he's a big guy for... too. He's like two thirty, right? Probably yeah, but st- he's like he's like you don't understand. Like this guy is so strong and explosive, and he could he could hurt me. Like, and I have to really be, you know. On his game yeah. constantly. I, I mean, couldn't even imagine what that strength would be like. Because I remember like one time grappling like some guy that was obviously much stronger than me, and he was able to grab my leg with one of his arms and control my leg. I'm like, good God, what the <laughs> fuck? Like my leg should be twice as strong as your arm, and you're just fucking <laughs> like it's nothing. I'm like, a little boy. Like holy yeah. shit, man. But imagine that, and then it's got to be times. 10 oh, to yeah. like Brock, he could probably hold both your legs like you're a little a yeah. child. Strong guy, man. Yeah. I mean, he held Frank Mir down. Look at, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It, it, it's funny, unless you do, I think, grappling, you know, if you, unless you've experienced someone else being able to just do whatever they want with you, it, that feeling of just being dominated yeah. by somebody, it's hard to describe. And, and, you know, you don't, I don't think you realize. I mean, there's some guys in the gym who just have my number every time. I, I fucking can't do anything. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, and other guys, it's it seems easy, but they're both the same weight. But why is this guy so much stronger? Than, it doesn't make sense, you know? And they look the same. Yeah. Well, how come this guy's got, like, you know, mad retard strength or whatever you want to call Because he likes it? to beat off all <laughs> the time. Know. His forearm grip is it's unstoppable. Crazy. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it's... Um, I would love to see Brock back in some fashion somewhere. Hell Yeah. It brings some excitement back to the UFC. I yeah. feel there's a lack of star power right yes. now. There, I agree. But what about this? I got a, I got a tangent here. Go Did ahead. you read this thing about Shail Sonnen said the WWE offered him like That's $5 bullshit. million? Dollars? It's bullshit. You think he's lying? Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't offer him that. You don't think so? Five mil? Maybe. Why? They well, can get him cheaper. He's a good talker, man. He is. So, I mean, he could sell some shit. You know, those guys have shows every week, sometimes twice a week, right? Two, three times. Mm-hmm. So the guy like that can pump up, you know... I don't know. But according to Chael Sonnen, he's never lost a fight in his life, and he's the <laughs> undisputed, uh, yes. you know, fucking... That's why he's the best. Middle. He's the best. I love it. Uh, yeah, so, I best. mean, you got to take everything he says with a grain yeah. of salt. Caprito so. actually likes him a lot. I don't know. Did I tell you this? No. Yeah, because they met at Metamoris. And he's like, oh, okay. I want to hate this guy, but he's so fucking nice. He's like, and he, he's got everybody in the back, like, mm-hmm. rolling, laughing, and... He was really respectful to Comprito, and he's he was like he came up to him after his fight. He's like, "That was awesome, whatever," you know. But then Comprito felt bad because he was fighting um, Galvao, which is Comprito's like really close friend, and he kind of like didn't really reciprocate. The whole, <laughs> yeah. He's like, "I yeah. feel so bad about that," but he's like, "He's like, I'm thinking, what about if I fight Chael Sonnen in the in Metamoris?" I was like, "I wear the gi, he doesn't wear the gi. What do you think about that?" I'm like, "That's brilliant." Can you guys start like some sort of <laughs> start Just some sort of some shit start talking shit? Going. He's like, you think that would work? He goes, I don't know, but we could try, you know. But hmm. um, yeah, he, he said would murder awesome. him with the gi, though. What's that? I said Caprito would murder him probably. With the gi. But you know, he thought he thought that Shale did really well against Galvao. You know, he and he wasn't afraid of him. He what he didn't like. Do a Brendan Schaub, you know, he's specific, yeah. he specifically said Brendan Schaub too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like he's Brendan Schaub um, and trying to run away or whatever. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Chael, I feel like, you know, five million sounds about right. Don't you think? I don't know what they pay those guys. It's hard to say. Brock, I think he disclosed it. I think he makes like six million a year or something like that. Seven million a year. I can see maybe two, but. You're here nor there. Yes, it is. Let's move along. So, UFC 184. I just get right out of that. Okay. We're moving on. Uh, February 28th, we finally have some good fights. Is that Super Bowl weekend? I don't know. I'm not up on footballs. Me neither. Chris Weidman, Vitor Belfort headlining. Ronda Rousey, Katzengano, co-main eventing. Yes. 
I don't give a fuck what the rest of the card is. I'm in for that. I still don't think Vitor Belfort will be making a fight. He's going to fail this drug test. <laughs> Could you imagine about? that? The guy shrivels down to like 170 pounds, and then he's going to fail the drug test. Yeah. They probably caught him like the week he said, <laughs> this is bullshit. It's time for a super TRT Vitor <laughs> Belfort. And he fucking takes a shot, and then they test it's him like the next day. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> I fail again! <laughs> There is no Jesus. His levels he levels will be he, over 2,000. He's going to piss on blasphemy <laughs> to Jesus and religion. When he pisses, it fucking melts everything. <laughs> it just melts right through That'd the cup. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so Why? sweet. It's neon green. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's like... I could see it. <laughs> he's breaking needles. They, they can't even stab the guy because his muscle is so tough. The like, needle oh, broke. Jesus. They take blood testing or urine? They did both. So oh, boy. Blood and He's urine. In trouble. No, I actually want to see. Because remember the other time he came out and he sent like 10 of his blood tests out and it showed. I want to say he, there were some where he was in the low 200s. He might have even been in the hundreds for all okay. I remember. But hopefully he'll get that test and publicize it. So I'd like to see for a man that you know was on TRT for a few years. He's older. And then comes off. What is his level going to go to? Twelve. I'm gonna, yeah. It's <laughs> going to be sub hundred. <laughs> How could you even fight? It's just. It's not fair, Ingo. It's not fair. Well, Man should have his sir. TRT. What? <laughs> after Jesus loaded. <laughs> Man should have his TRT. Come they on. probably just tested him the day after. Yeah. They probably upped his dosage. Maybe. I'm just trying to make excuses. Drugs. No I doses. love Vitor. TRT Jesus Load Belfort. That's Joe Rogan said that may be the greatest era in MMA ever. The DRT Vitor era. It he is. may be the greatest fighter ever in the. I mean, what do you have, like five knockouts or something ridiculous? At least three with like spinning it's head kick crazy. type shit. <laughs> it's like Superman. Oh my God, look at this man. He almost beat John Jones. He had an yeah. arm bar, broke his arm or something. He did. <sighs> what could have yeah. been? What else we have? Oh, Anderson Silva signing a 15 fight deal. Yes. With the UFC. Did you say 15? Yeah. <laughs> because he's what 39. Okay. You need to lock him up for the next why 15? 11 years. He's gonna fight till he's 90. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe they're just trying to you know keep him from another organization, like lock him up forever. You know, I can see that. Bellator gets Hoist Gracie. Maybe they don't want Anderson Silva. Going over the Bellator. Gracie's not going to fight, though, is he? No. No. Okay. But he's just like a brand ambassador. Okay. And maybe they're trying to lock this guy up so no one else can brand ambassador anything else. Which is weird. The last thing you want to talk about this Friday, we have Luke Rockhold versus Michael Bisping. Oh, boy. We the have, two Twitter war boys. Yeah. Pirate Eye versus the Tiger Ball Smuggler or Juggler. He was in the Thailand. Mm-hmm. He likes the Tiger Boys. It was ball sacks? Yeah. Okay. Which is weird. I don't think I'd be funneling a tiger's balls. I don't think I'm doing that. I might. I might lick them. I don't know if I'm going to fondle them. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. What do I think about this fight? Yes. What do you like I, in this fight? I one? think they're two very similar fighters. Both guys with good cardio. Both guys with um, pretty good all-around game. Where's this happening? Uh, I'm going to say Brazil. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I have, did no research on this. I didn't even know there was a fight. So, But. I don't know where they are. I'm gonna but go I ahead do know it's on Friday. I'm going to say it's Bisbing via decision. Really? Yeah. I think I think his all-around game's too good, and he can impose his will on most guys. I think Rockhold, um, you know, what is it? Is it the Vitor fight that he always uh, uh, wants back? Yeah, because he, you know, both of them. <laughs> You know, yeah. lost to the Vitor oh, yeah. on Jesus Load. But so. Bisping made it further, didn't he? Well, Bisping got a TKO, and I think Rockhold just got straight up KO'd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his lights shot off. I'm going to take Bisping via decision. I think it's going to be uh, a, a pretty big, drawn-out, up-and-down battle, but I, I, I like the Bisping. <laughs> you like the Bisping? I like the Bisping. Good for you. What do you say, sir? Well... <clears throat> I'm still concerned about the Bisping's eye. Can't see. Were I you mean, blinking a lot last time. Are you like cost checking it? You have to put oil in there still. Like yeah, did, yeah. It, that eye is not right. And uh, I think Luke is actually going to submit him. 
Ooh, that's interesting. He's, he's sneaky on the ground. Is he? I, I still don't know where this fight's happening. Sydney, Australia. Oh. Thank you. Which man, is weird. That's no man's land. Yeah. I, it's, no, it's, it's neither here up. nor there. <laughs> no toss up. It's closer to England than it is the U.S., I think. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it's halfway. I'm taking Rockhold's submission. Okay. I'll buy that. Definitely possible. Because I think Bisbing is getting too close to fighting Anderson Silva. <laughs> Well, that could be <laughs> potentially the next fight at this pace. It could so, be. Um, who else is on that card? Anyone else? Uh, you have Pearson versus Ally Aquinta. Oh, I like that one. Whitaker, Hester. Man, that's about it. Okay. Anybody on the prelims? Not so much. Like, ha. Hmm. Kind of ha. So that's a free fight? Is that on TV? That will be on UFC Fight Pass. <laughs> Shit, I can never watch. Fight Pass. Yeah. Fuck you, Fight Pass. Bunch of bitches. Get your shit on Xbox and P- PS4. I won't watch that on the computer. I'll watch it on my Xbox, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll watch it. Yeah. Will you? Okay. Hands off. <laughs> Pants off, dance off. You <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> nice. We go to Ask the Nuts. Being brought to you by TireBuyer.com, Ingo. What? New sponsor. Tire Buyer? What do you buy there? stuff tires tires you get 30 dollars off of 400 or more dollars with code mma nuts 30 yes hey what listen it's fucking winter coming up soon i don't know if you've noticed my tires check your tires because there's nothing more dangerous than driving around with bald tires well there could be like unprotected sex is right up there but i'm just saying <laughs> just go in or go home that's right tirebuyer.com tirebuyer.com I'm sure they love that we're talking about that in the middle of the promo. But <laughs> MMA Nuts 30, correct? They got hot in here. Yes. <laughs> Save $30. 30 bucks off. 400 bucks off. Fires like on November 7th. So you better yeah. get in. Well, t- technically, 400 bucks is nothing. That's like a new set of tires easily. That's like three tires. Yeah. So, you know, get your fucking snow tires, whatever you got to do. That's right. Get Don't your rub, rubbers. You know. That's the nuts, Ingo's. Yes. Gustavo Ribeiro, he says. There's two of me. Matt, <laughs> I like to throw S's on every once in a while. It's like Chuck E. Cheese's. I'm awesome. Let's go to the jewels. <laughs> I got a very important question for you. This is to me. He says, with the TRT and having your balls big and swollen, who would you choose to rest your balls in his slash hers forehead? Well, actually, my balls are shrinking and it's quite frightening. It's shrunken by about 33%. Nice. A 33 percent. He's got a measuring. He's got one of those calipers. <laughs> I'm, like, I don't use the caliper balls. for my fat. I use the caliper for my millimeter. balls. Oh, fuck. These are 10 millimeter now. It's kind of frightening, Ingo. Sometimes you go to scratch your balls. And you're like, what's happening? Where are they? Where are my balls? <laughs> They're leaving me. Leaving lost balls. Um, I'd still rest them on the cyborg. Apparently, she blew her knee out, though. Ouch. She is not fighting at Invicta 10. Which is a little unfortunate, so she will not be making her 135 debut. Unfortunate. Well, Alan Weir. Smoking nails. Yes. Which fighter has the best nickname? He says his favorite is Uncle Creepy. That's a good one. What about you? How about War Machine? <laughs> no. Just kidding. Mayhem. Mayhem. That guy's batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh we need God. to start a Kickstarter for like two quadrillion dollars to. Help fund his escapades. Save my dog. <laughs> Save my wiener dog. I'd still surprise they didn't shoot that fucking dog. <laughs> Alligator dog. What is it called? Gator dog. You see okay. the picture of that dog? No. We like painted it green and did like a design what? on him. Looks like an alligator. That poor dog. Oh, terrible. Could you imagine if you're a man's <laughs> dog? Oh, God. I'm sure he treats that dog like a oh, champ. I'm sure. The dog's awesome. I like Big Rig. I was saying this earlier. Mm. Johnny Hendrix, big fan of that nickname. I think it's pretty cool. And it's fitting. Like when you when you well, he drives a big rig too. Well yeah, it just you know, when you if you if you know the guy or met the guy, like the way you like he's like American man. Like, you know, mm. he's like the typical American guy. Chew with the chaw. It fits with the chew. Yeah. Does he go long grain? Or know. is it short? I don't know shit about it. Skull maybe? Some shit? I don't know. Yeah, long grain. That that's really chew. Like the shit. Like, you ever eat, eat that uh, Big League Chew bubble gum? Yes. That's how the long oh, cut okay. chewing tobacco is. I mean, you get a chunk of that shit in your mouth, you're like, 
Okay. Not like the Cody. I've only chewed tobacco the Copenhagen. here and there. In college, I was doing it for a semester or two off and on during mm-hmm. finals. Try to stay the fuck awake, <laughs> you know? Instead of smoking. Yeah. Smoking's bad for you, but it chew is, is not. <laughs> yeah, it's totally not. It's totally safe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have a roommate that used to chew and then leave dip cups all over the oh, fucking house. Cool. I'd get so pissed off. I'd wake him up. I'm like, motherfucker, goddamn dip cup. Take care of that shit. It's the grossest thing to really find nice, in the I house. I never did that. I cleaned up my mess. But yeah, you just spit outside. Do you know what I need a fucking dip cup? Yeah. Or if you're going to do that, take care of it right away. The axe murderer. I like that one. That's a good one, too. Just in Dr. Brown Carter. If you two had to fight off an army of coked up zombie prostitutes, say two fighters, who would it be? And he says he's taking Tim Kennedy and Cowboy. And I'm going to say coked up prostitutes zombie prostitutes why why fight them off have you ever had some zombie pussy yeah could be good damn right you just gotta hold the head down to avoid <laughs> getting, <laughs> yeah. getting bitten <laughs> like hmm zombie pussy and follow-up question from him it says hey Ingo, since i figure you and matt are very close as friends in your opinion, since he's on TRT Jesus load, how bad would he fail the test if the NSAC tested him right now? Oh, he'd be fucked. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm in the levels now. Oh, okay. We've reduced me a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. The early reports are in TRT VTOR load. Well, I was in the 1300 level, <laughs> but then I'm trying to think what percentage we reduced my load by. Uh, I think we reduced me by 20%. Okay. So our next blood test will be... be 900? No, I should. Uh, we're gonna bump it up then. If we're in nine hundred, we need to be about a thousand. Okay. I think that's what we're shooting for. But you're feeling good. Still feeling good. Okay. Good workouts. Blew everything out today. Felt great. Mm-hmm. Good. Tired. You know, it all works out. Uh, last question from Justin: If the MMA nuts was a TV comedy show like Modern Family or some shit, what would happen in the pilot episode? What would happen in the pilot episode? <laughs> uh. Definitely, there would be a big black cock at some point. Someone would catch some sort of disease. Uh, beer Are you would, sure? Beer would be drank. There would be epic. It would be like cocaine. Epicness. There'd be Cookies man thongs. There'd be cowboy oh. boots yes. and probably a headband. Depends like, what like channel training. is this on. Is this HBO or are we talking like regular TV? HBO. Oh, HBO. And then all bets are off. People the be, Queen of Dragons would people come be out. Getting shot and killed. Be riding on her back. Mm-hmm. Cyborg. Mm-hmm. The cyborg. <laughs> She's giving me a piggyback ride, feeding me jelly beans. <laughs> okay. I think that happened. It was I like a it. dream of mine. Uh, yes. It's all good. Uh, Ryan Smith asks, in your opinion, who are your three most exciting fighters in the UFC today? And he says, uh, Rousey, Cerrone, and Lawler. I think Cerrone definitely is. I had, I hate to say this. Lozon, Sanchez. Here you go. Don't do it. You know what I'm gonna say. Don't. You're gonna say John Jones. I am John you Jones. Son of a bitch. John Jones is probably the number one for me. As much as I dislike him, he is definitely exciting. Um, of course, I gotta go with Joe Lozon. Yeah. Always exciting. And my last pick, the third one, would be probably. Who's number three? Dude, I, I gotta go Mark Hunt on this shit. Every there time you go, I like Hunt, that. You know? I'm like, when Mark Hunt's fighting, I'm like, all right, something's gonna happen. It's I true. don't know what, but something's gonna happen. Well, here's the weird thing, too, because you know they're fighting in Mexico, and Mexico is at like 7,000 feet above sea level, so it will actually be the highest altitude UFC fight ever. Really? And do you remember the last one that happened in Colorado? Oh, I yeah, believe it was. Tired. Ben Rothwell and was it Mark Hunt? Maybe. Or yeah. was it? In, they're about to die, I think. Gilbert Evil. That could be it. Is that the one? It could be. Yeah. Rothwell Evil. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that was that was maybe what five thousand feet. Yeah, they had like th- mm, three minutes of excitement, and then it was oh, so that one hill from dying. There. Yes. So that's. Gonna I be didn't realize it was that. Is it Mexico City? Yes. Is that what the- it's 7,000 feet above sea level? Yes. I didn't know that. Wow. No shit. Even higher than Colorado? Yes. Weird. So we're going to see what happens with we that. We do. I thought Mexicans, the whole Mexico was always like flat, but it's not the case. No. Weird, right? Yeah. 
Matthew Freeney, locked in a trailer, fight to the death. Who wins, GSP or Diaz? Oh, I think GSP. What? Yeah. In GSP a trailer? Holds him down. No. <laughs> he just holds him down and smothers yes. him. <laughs> Suffocates him yes. by smothering. Boy, we won't be playing this holding down shit. Let me up, motherfucker. I don't know. I think if you're going street, that's because then that's street rules, motherfucker. He's got a pick. Yeah, he's he's, like, you know Diaz always has a shank on him. He he's fucking shanking that bitch. Yeah. I got my money on Diaz all night, all like day, Trust all me. night. He's from the streets. Ryan Smith, he says, since my, I can speak, since Matt has fight pass, is there any one particular fight or KO he watches over and over? Dan Henderson <laughs> versus <already> Bisbing <laughs> is probably high on the list. He's sitting around on Saturday drinking coffee. He's like, mm, let me pull up this. <laughs> I can't it. lie. <laughs> you know when it is. <laughs> Andrew said Bisbee on three hours straight of his bang. Of his bang. Yeah. Bisbee. 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 You, need, you know why? Because it was so satisfying. Because <laughs> that son of a bitch talks so he much did. trash on the show. Yeah. And Henderson, they're both opposing coasters on Season Ultimate Fighter. Bisbee's running his mouth and Henderson's just like, I'm going to do my talking come fight time. Yeah. And they shut him off and then he shut him up. <laughs> And that's how you handle that. That's yes. how a man takes care of business. And yeah. no fines. <laughs> you got no fines, Ingo. Even after he said he did it on purpose. <laughs> right. And other people that say that, fine, <laughs> cut, whatever. But not Hendo. Nope. He's too cool for school, right? Yes. Rodrigo Machado. What's your guy's favorite submission and least favorite submission? He says his favorite is the rear naked choke and his least favorite is a leg lock. Uh, Go ahead. Favorite submission. Hmm. Am I, I mean, am I delivering them? Or like getting them done to me? Are we playing that scenario or the ones I like to Maybe watch? just what he likes to watch, maybe? I'm going to go ones I like to deliver. I like to deliver a mounted triangle. Nice. What I don't not like? I don't know. It's a good question. I never get submitted. Never. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ever. I'm just kidding. He's unsubmittable. Uh. I didn't like that in the gi. I didn't care for that bow and arrow or whatever the yeah, fuck that, that was that called. Yeah, that one sucks. You get that fucking collar right on it, and that one blows. I have a, I'm susceptible to that. I don't know why, but I I get stuck in that a lot. Uh -huh. Bow and arrow truck. It's a motherfucker. Can't hard to get out of. So favorite submission. Yeah, your favorite. Um. I I don't know. Like for me, when I'm jujitsu wise, I like the arm triangle. I feel like it's a good. It's a good, like the chokes, you know, mm -hmm. like because people get out of the arm bars yeah. and all the weird shit. Chokes but if you are choke good. somebody and they can't breathe, that's always money. It doesn't matter how big you are. If you can't too. breathe, like <laughs> you're going to sleep. So I'm a big fan of those. What I don't like, um, I don't, any of the, like in the gi, the collar chokes. I mean, my neck gets fucked up, like sometimes. Some of the guys really got some good, slick, mm -hmm. weird angle chokes and shit, and that shit hurts. Like, it's, it's to the point, sometimes you get that across your nose, you know, and you just tap from that, because it fucking hurts, like your nose is all fucked up, and there's a big scratchy <laughs> G all over that, you know, just like... So you bite your... Yeah. yeah. Bring so. it back down. And then, uh, last question, Justin Coleman. Who is the best MMA fighter ever? Ever? In all of MMA, ever? Yeah. You go first. John Jones. Oh, <laughs> No. He's the best MMA fighter ever. No. I'm I don't think kidding. he's been tested enough. Uh, Bass Rutten. No. I'm, I'm not buying that either. But he's what? up there. What? Come on. Ever. He was he was the most complete fighter. He's got the slapping. I, I still like Anderson Silva. I mean. I don't know. He can't handle a knee check. His, his leg's too weak. Yeah. That could be from years of weight cutting or just bad and whatever. But... I think out of all the guys who have been challenged, he's probably been challenged the most, and he's won in many different ways. And John Jones is on his way. Talk to me in five, six fights. If he's still doing the same shit, fine. He's you, finishing. You, you, you demand. I'm going with John Jones. You demand. He's been finishing, dudes. I mean, I, I still remember the fucking Machida thing, where he just, I mean, that's just brutal. Like, eh. Fuck you. It was a little rapey. <laughs> it was. Like, I felt like, like his cock was like, going to end up like in you. some sort of Machida like, orifice. Yeah. You want to hit me in the first round? Here's here's a little fit. Here, eat this. Yeah. yeah See ya. Drops him off. That was brutal. Yep. Um, I Jones is on his way. Okay. As much as I dislike Jones. 
fair enough. It's all good. Sometimes I just click shit and it doesn't work out. Yes. We were going to knowledge, you think? Knowledge? Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Well, my only thing is is that, um, you know, with Boardwalk Empire drawing to a close. A screeching halt. Yes. With the strangest last episode ever. I'm not sure I like it or don't like it. It's a yeah. bit weird. Whatever. Um, what are you going to be watching the next few months between now and Game of Thrones? Sonic Highways. Uh, the Foo Fighter thing. That's okay. pretty cool to watch. Yeah. Uh, I'll watch any documentary. I like that Ozzy documentary that keeps running. I caught that one again. I haven't seen it. Have I seen it? Maybe I have. I think you have. It's pretty good. Yeah. I think his son actually was part producer of that. So okay. Jack Osborne produced part of that. That one was good. It ran the other day. I like watching that. Mm -hmm. Anything else coming on? I don't see anything else. Are you got a mic problem over there? I'm just adjusting it. All right. For the last yeah, good. 30 Two seconds. seconds of the show. <laughs> As I oh, noticed, it's a little crooked. Drink how's your, how's your pivo over there? My who? Your pivo. It's Serbian for beer. Great. I still have stains on the bottle. It's a bottle. You not like beer. that? Does that bother you? A little bit because it looks like someone tried to make chocolate milk. Is it the bottle, not the beer? Yeah. What do you mean? See the stains in there? Oh, it's inside the bottle? Yeah. Determined it's a bottle, not the beer. Have you tried to clean it? Close? No. How do you know? It's the bottle. It's a little scary. It's got stains. The bottle's talking. It says it's the bottle, not the beer. It's the bottle. Um, That's it. Shut it down. Shut it down. This has been the, this week's edition of Emily Nuts. My name's Ingo Weigold. Matt Griffin. See you next time. Thanks for playing. Bye bye.